Convo Fango. Today, I am joined by the creators of Hellbender, the Adams family. We've got John, Toby, Zelda, and Lulu. Adams, you guys made that way too easy on me. I didn't have to like <laughs> practice like five last names, you know. <laughs> so thanks for coming to hang out. <laughs> Thanks it's so nice having. to be here. We're so stoked to talk with you. And um, we had such a good time with you at Telluride that we're excited to be back hanging with you. Awesome. Yeah, I had such a blast with you guys. Like I had a blast with your movie and then I just had a blast actually getting to like hang out with you afterwards. And guys, they're every bit as cool as you would imagine they would be, but even more so. Just letting everyone <laughs> out there know. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Pressure's on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you guys are an actual family uh, and also a whole ass production studio uh, and a full film crew, you know, as one does. So <laughs> why not? Makes it easy. <laughs> yeah. So tell us a little bit about what Hellbender is about. Hellbender is a coming of age story about a kid, Izzy, who lives on an isolated mountaintop with their mom. Um, they rock out into uh, yeah, the nothingness of the Catskill Mountains. And she comes to terms with her legacy as a, as a mean, uh, you know, badass hellbender. And it's not easy for the mother to let that happen. Nice. A mean, badass hellbender. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's a loving, badass hellbender. But some people might think she's a mean, badass hellbender. That's what's fun about it. Is... Mean as in good. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the good kind of mean. I'm <laughs> down with that. Yeah. It's like open in to interpretation, you know what I mean? Like five of us could watch this movie together and some of us would be like, no, she's a loving hellbender. And a couple might be like, no, she's a mean hellbender. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, that's really what we were hoping yep. for. We yeah. wanted people to, at the end of the movie to be like, I'm not sure who, which hellbender I was rooting for. <laughs> right. Place your bets. Which which hellbender is is your money on? Well, the bets are easy. The bets are on Izzy, but uh, you know. <laughs> that's true. Just because your bets are on her, that means you know where your money's gonna go. You know, that's but it doesn't true. mean that's who you're rooting for. That just means like the smart investment here is. Yeah. <laughs> Odds are in favor of. Right. So how does it? Uh... Like, can you guys walk us through the process a little bit, like from the inception of the script to actually writing the script to the production? Like, how do you divvy it up? Because I feel like you all kind of do a little bit of everything. Yeah, so um, Toby kind of found out some news about her father. I don't really want to speak for you, Toby. Do you want to talk about that? And then I can oh, kind of... That. <laughs> sure, okay. Um, yeah, so I found out um, that my biological father um well my, the father who raised me was not my biological father that i was donor conceived and so after 50 years you know you learn this you get your brain starting to cook like well damn like what if my my biological dad was, was a creep or a serial killer or the devil you know so we kind of kicked off from that and we thought you know what we're not really ready to tackle the devil so let's just take a slice of the devil and conceive this Badass hellbender. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. of the devil. <laughs> yeah, we started out with this idea of the devil's daughter, and then we were like, "Oh God, we cannot do that." Like, who do we think we are having the budget for that? We do not have that to create our own fiery hell. So, yeah, the great thing about horror is that you know there are no rules. You can pretty much do whatever you want. You can create your own mythological creature, and that's what we did with Hellbender. And it was really fun. Awesome. And so when you're doing like, cam like who's on like camera and who's like assigned to all these different things, like how do you guys decide that? <laughs> this is like our seventh movie. So at this point, we've kind of figured out who does what well mm -hmm. and who loves doing the different aspects of movie making. Like, you know, Zelda's become a terrific cinematographer. She's brought motion to our film. She's been doing this since she was six years old. And so... And she's also got a very young eye. And same with Lulu. Both of them are a different generation of, of, from us. And so they have a different eye about what they want, what they think goes into a great movie. Mm -hmm. um, Toby's a terrific storyteller. And she's very good at understanding the circles of story and the arcs of story. And it's important to her to make sure that everything's explained. I love the visceral aspects of horror. Like, I want to cut somebody's head off. Toby <laughs> says... We have to know why we're going to cut the person's head off. <laughs> Lulu says, 
That looks totally phony. <laughs> That looked phony. You guys need to do that better. And so it's like people are really falling into their place about um, in, in our little production company about what they do best. And we honor each other's um, strengths. It's true, though, that like whenever whoever is not acting in front of the camera is the one controlling and directing behind the camera. And then when we're done shooting that, that scene, we all go home and look at the footage together and kind of make decisions based off of like what we're seeing in the editing process. I love that because it's like, uh, like I went to film school and that's, and I grew up making, you know, movies with my siblings and like just be, being in our backyard and being like, all right, I need you guys to do this. So it's like all of my favorite elements of like what, like the most fun shit of filmmaking, but you guys just held on to that. I feel like a lot of people like end up missing that and they're like, oh, I kind of miss when it was like kind of this ragtag, like hanging out with my friends kind of thing. Cause you just <laughs> starting these huge things, but you guys are like, no, fuck it. We're going to like hold on to like the aspects of what makes us want to do it in the first first place and just like <laughs> punk rock the shit out of it and like DIY and it's so fun like it comes through on the screen and you can just tell everyone's having so much fun and it makes it fun for the audience oh thank yeah. you so much we we really wanted to have fun with Hellbender because we'd finished our last film the deeper you dig and it was pretty dark we we're like you know what you know we kind of want our movie to reflect our, our filmmaking process like we have a lot of fun as family and as friends making movies so let's kind of make our next one fun and like our way of doing that was like having color and the band and the music sequences in it um so yeah the band allows for like really cool visuals too because you guys are like just chilling in your house right the two of you but you like get all done up like in these different like rock star kind of like cosplaying kind of things even though it's just the two of you like you know let's go all out at home and like do makeup but it's like i'm like i would dress as like multiple outfits of those i would do for halloween costumes like they're cool <laughs> yeah. yeah it's it's fun you know the mom is keeping the daughter secluded away but is trying to like give her that fun by like doing themselves up and doing makeup and then from like the filmmaking side there is a lot of like hidden symbolism in that makeup and dressing up and you know the the music also has a lot of hidden uh symbolism and metaphors in it as well and you guys did all the music for yeah, it yeah we found it a good way to drive the story without having too much yep yep we 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 have a band called hellbender <laughs> with with sixes as ease and you know, we wanted the, like Zelda said, we wanted the movie to have fun and we wanted to be able to drive the story with these uh, musical things so that a lot of story would get told in a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. And so the lyrics of the songs reflect what's going on in the story. Do, do you want to say something, Z? No, yeah. I was going to add, though, like uh, this movie kind of was born from our, you know, musical creations. It, it's not only from like what Toby found out about her father, but also... We were making uh, a music video for our song called uh, Black Sky and like we made some editing mistakes and like found something that looked really visually awesome and we were like oh my god like we have to make a movie that's playing around with this like kind of psychedelic visual editing mistake and so it's kind of cool that this movie Hellbender came from a music video it's yeah. It's kind of meta in a way because I'm like you guys are mother and daughter playing a mother and daughter and you have a band and you also have a band you know what I mean like so it's kind of like how much of it is you how much of it is fake I know you can't really tell me whether or not you are in fact a hellbender um, but... <laughs> that's a secret I'll never tell <laughs> I don't need the answer to that because then you have to come and kill me so I will just leave it at like okay it's, it's very meta We'll leave it who <laughs> has okay. angel food cake ah, ah. <laughs> Maybe I'm a hellbender too. So ah, we'll yes. <laughs> I I saw that movie and I was like, how do they know? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> they get me finally. Yes. <laughs> I've been watching so many horror movies. Okay. <laughs> you know, I really loved the scenes with uh, Lulu and Zelda too. I think. I mean, you're not playing sisters in the movie, but I think you just have chemistry as sisters, obviously. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, there's something that happens between sisters, and you have a certain chemistry and a certain bond. I have a little sister, and I can see uh, that on screen with you two, and it's just very fun. Again, like, I'm just, like, loving those scenes. Uh, have you made your sister eat a worm, too? <laughs> I've made my sister eat so many things. <laughs> <laughs> it's for the art. The camera is on. Just do it. <laughs> 
I always say that Lulu is just acting as her natural self, making me eat things I don't want to be <laughs> eating. So... <laughs> <laughs> that's why it's so fun and it comes across i'm like yeah those are sisters for sure <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you Amazing. i was very happy to have that role together and get to have that new dynamic still but there was so much to grow off of in that role of us working together and it was very much like us at the moment actually because we were doing distance this was in the beginning of the pandemic and i came home for a bit but i was living separately and doing distance with them and so all those shots, actually, Zelda and I are at a distance. And, you know, she puts her chair away and such from me. And so that kind of distance was a bit <clears throat> representative of what was going on with us. Right. At the time. That's it's awesome. Cool. And then she has a line, too. I don't remember exactly what it was, but it's like a I funny think little it line. To people. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's true. When, when we were shooting that scene, I was like, there's no way in hell I'm getting close to Lulu. I am not getting COVID, bro. So, yeah, moving the chair away was very real. <laughs> and that's such a sister thing to say. I'm not, I'm not getting COVID, bro. You say. I didn't even have COVID. <laughs> exactly. I, I didn't know. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Yeah, I mean, she could have been thinking the same thing about you. And you're yeah. like, no, you see. <laughs> awesome. You guys are already working on your next uh, project, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got nonstop. You guys are just like. <laughs> yeah, I no can't stopping. remember. Yeah. Cool. No stopping. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember a day that like we haven't been making a film. It's kind of just become so intertwined with our life that it's it's just what we do. And when we're not, it's like. Whoa, what's going on? <laughs> we need to make a movie right now. It's so true. We could make like a documentary just of the conversations we have, like while well, pre-COVID out at restaurants or on street corners. Just what people would overhear us saying, like, hey, do you think that if we like cut off the grandma's head and then we like set her on fire <laughs> and she like flies into the sky and then like her brains you know and everything falls like confetti over everyone below like what could we make that work you know and you can imagine what people were thinking passing us by well, <laughs> there's we, like there's someone had... cutting their steak at the next table and they're like the fuck <laughs> we just had somebody go through one of our packages because we ordered an arm and uh we because in our next movie it's bonnie and clyde meets frankenstein and so there's some frankenstein stuff going on so we needed an arm and we found this guy who makes insanely authentic arms and i was like i need bones in it because i gotta cut through the bones and he was like yeah no problem i'll do it all <laughs> and like either amazon or the police or someone had opened up the whole box checked out the arm and put it back together and it was just kind of like oh my god oh, amazing. no robbery problems at our house <laughs> right, exactly. and it is funny because we leave all the body parts out on our porch so it's true if anyone's come to rob our house they have definitely left yeah. <laughs> they, they peace out as soon as they walk in they're like nope nope right the hell out of there <laughs> Peace being the correct yeah. Yeah. you guys are on so many watch lists like <laughs> <laughs> oh god i know it's not it's so true we're hitting all the bad word points yeah. like all between the, the shit that you're ordering between the stuff that you're googling between the stuff that you say out on oh. the streets like you're like on all the lists that exist <laughs> not to mention the horrible things we do to our own kid in the movie not to spoil anything <laughs> yeah. and thankfully thankfully they're they're all above 18 now so no, no. <laughs> Like, cool. <laughs> we made it through that part of life. You hear that CPS just throwing that out there. They're all exactly. over 18. <laughs> oh man, you guys are awesome. Um, you know what? I think Shudder should do an Adam's Family reality show. I would watch oh. that. <laughs> That's so nice. I would watch the shit out of that. <laughs> Yeah, well, it'll be in prison because that's what we'll do <laughs> after the first episode. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll do like a GoFundMe and we'll bail you guys out. It's oh, fun. that's yeah. Fun. <laughs> I have faith. I have faith in the fans. <laughs> so, is there anything else you guys want to share with us before we part ways? Listen, we we love Fangoria, and you guys have been so wonderful, and and we're fans of, of the mag and and online and and we just we love you guys and thanks for talking to us yeah and the support because it's you know making these movies is so fun and it just feels good that we have an audience out there that's having fun with us and you guys are that so thank you we love you too i'm speaking for all of fango right now because i know for a fact that i could say we all we all love oh. the adam's family oh. <laughs> all right thank you guys check out hellbender february 24th on shutter it is a good time you got some good music in there 
And like I said, Halloween costume inspo. So get on that. <laughs> oh, I'm looking forward to your next project, guys. And hopefully I will see you again soon.